away we go at beautiful Belmont Park. Three weeks remain during this spring summer meet. A mere 15 cards of racing. It is hard to believe. We'll cover slightly less racing on tonight's edition of the National Racing Report. In fact, a dozen spread out over five tracks. Glad you're with us on MSG Plus. Richard Migliori, Andy Serling, Jason Blewett. Overcast Sunday morning. We hope by the time we get back on Wednesday, it'll be dry. We'll be fast and firm. But we're getting close to the finish line at Belmont Park. And on Saturday, we had a pretty big field in the Mother Goose. Yeah, we had a terrific race in the Mother Goose. And we go to some different places this weekend. Closing day at Churchill Downs and uh, Prairie Meadows, our annual visit there. <laughs> Quite a mixed bag on this. And I think some of the races, we're going to see just how important saving ground is. Let's do that. Actually, the uh, winner of the Mother Goose put in an eye-catching five-wide sweep or so approaching the quarter pole as we get to the 59th running of this grade one stake for three-year-old Phillies. Purse at 300000 No clear-cut favorite. In fact, the lukewarm chalk, 7-2 on Wonder Gal from the outside. Yeah, and Wonder Gal ran fine here. I don't think the distance limitations did her in. It just seems maybe if you were closer to the pace, it was a little bit tougher. And include Betty had been a horse that had just been a little bit unlucky in recent starts. Had a ridiculous ride and trip in the Kentucky Oak. And then last time was compromised by a slow pace to Black Eyed Susan. Got a fast pace here. Much the best. Yeah, she got the pace she needed to set up that late kick. You can see it takes her about three-eighths of a mile to find her stride. But you knew once she kind of leaned into the bit, Drayden Van Dyke had some horse under him. And a nice uh, debut, Belmont debut for him. Yeah, no, he came here yesterday. I think he rode three horses in total. And he won with his first two, both of them for Tom Proctor. And none more important than this one. And, you know, the race didn't come up that fast. It, it was obviously a fast pace slow final time. It got an 85 buyer. And I don't think that thrust her in the lead of the division, but it makes her a player in the division with this grade one mother goose combined with the rest of her resume. Well, I think that the, the leader of the division is obviously the Philly that won the Kentucky sure. Oaks, but I think she's got to be considered top three. Um, right now, well, listen, they're all in the discussion, Richie, because you've got the CCA Oaks coming and the Alabama coming up, and then races in the fall like the Cotillion and obviously the Breeders' Cup. So any number of these horses can be the three-year-old champion. Yes, Lovely Marie has the Kentucky Oaks, the big one. She also has the Ashland, but I think it's wide open. Top three, top five. I mean, the horse of California is certainly right up there as well. Yeah, Jason, you and I had spoken about this when we watched this last night. She made this kind of extended run to include Betty, and I thought maybe she was getting involved too soon. She was able to keep it going, though, through the stretch as Wonder Gal between horses kind of flattens out late, and the eventual runner-up here, uh, actually Wonder Gal was second. Chide, I thought, ran okay for Albert Stahl. Ch Chide was actually right there with the eventual winner in the backstretch, and the winner was just too fast for her. She made her move. She hung a little bit at the end. She probably should have been second. I agree with what you said, Richie, though. I do think he moved too soon on her. I think if he had moved a little bit later, she probably runs a slightly better race. Yeah, because I think he just sometimes riders first time here, and, and I think he he did a really good job considering it was his first time here. You start moving into the turn, and then you realize, wait a second, it's a little bit further than most other racetracks when you start moving into the turn. Yeah, no, I think that's a very interesting point, Richie. I think it makes her performance probably a little better. And this is somewhat of a subtle distinction, but a little better than it looks near. Hot City Girl, a horse you and I had talked about at Trips and Traps when she ran the New York Red Race. She ran an unusually good race, but you could see how fast the pace was, and she never really conceded that badly, dead heating for fifth in the race. I think her performance was underrated. She's a New York Red to be reckoned with later in the year in that division. Well, absolutely. She had every right to just collapse. Absolutely. Cave in completely much like Munasara did who was chasing that pace. The fact that she hung in there to basically split the field, I thought that was a big effort. No, she finished well ahead, five lengths ahead of Embellish the Lace, who was the second choice who was involved in the pace with her. And Munasara didn't know running at all. She was kind of the hype buzz horse going in was bet. In fact, her uh, morning line price of 10 to 1 was cut in half, sent off at odds of 5 to 1, and she showed absolutely nothing running last of 10. No, you and I joked about it. Eric Donovan, as usual, nailed almost all of the horses right in the air. He had embellished the laces price right, the winner's price right. He does such a tremendous job. And then we said, well, he had Musunasara 10 to 1. I said to you, no, he made it the price she should have been. It's just the public over better. All right, we have the Coaching Club American Oaks, July 31st, that opening Sunday card upstate at the spa. We'll see who goes where, but the uh, Saturday program belonged to include Betty. We're down to the last couple of grade ones during this meet this coming Saturday. Stars and Stripes Day in the Belmont Derby and the Belmont Oaks. Now, things did not work out for Todd Pletcher and Javier Castellano in the Mother Goose with Eskin for Money. Javier, however, jumped right on a plane and was riding at Prairie Meadows in the three stakes. He just misses with a good ride here.
No, actually, he rode, He did not ride the second place finisher. He did not get there. In fact, Thank you very I was going to say to you, Jay, if he had gotten there in time, I think he would have all, won all three races because Shane Lavaletta was riding the horse who was second, got a little bit caught behind horses on the turn, and you're going to see he comes from the big run and just misses on Pangburn. Sarah is a nice horse. Uh, she was able, though, to set a more moderate pace than it necessarily looked like she would on paper. Yeah, no, she really, especially the second quarter, she established the speed, then moderated. Julio Felix is a guy that's ridden in uh, Ohio and around there most of his life, and I always thought he could have taken a step up. And I even actually asked him to come here one winter. I said, you should, you would fit in New York. And he was always comfortable where he was, but even watching him finish, and he's about the same age as me at this point, he still got it. The guy can ride. Wow, he must be pretty old. It's pretty amazing he's able to do that <laughs> at his advanced stage, almost as old as I am, actually. Does a good job with her and is able to set a very controlled pace near gets it done. Hangburn was a little bit unlucky here, and more unlucky that Javier Castellano did not quite get there in time. But he won two stakes, yes, so did. we'll <laughs> give him a pass for not getting there for the Iowa Oaks. I saw his name in the PPs and just assumed he made it in time. But we do have the winner, Philly by Sharp Humor, bred in Kentucky. Picked up as a two-year-old in training for just 20000 And this win put her over the $300,000 mark in career earnings. Now we can get on to Javier Castellano in the Iowa Derby as we check out the three-year-old Colts and Geldings in a race in which Bet Don Bourbon scored at $10.80 with an eye-catching run off the turn. Just blew this field apart. I agree. He won this race. He was in total command. Well, being aggressive, he went after the leader. He wasn't waiting on anybody. This Philly really, um, really, I mean, I'm sorry, this Colt really picked it up um, off the turn. I can't tell you how difficult it is for a rider to do what Javier did yesterday. Ride all day here, hustle to a private plane, jump on, fly to Iowa, run to the jocks room. You don't really know the, the, the lay of the land as well as you would your home track and go out there and ride basically within minutes of getting into the jocks. It, it, it's remarkable what he did. Well, he must have done it within minutes because, as we were talking about, he missed the other race. Just a half an hour later, he's riding this horse. He's a tremendous rider. And I remember watching the races last night on TV, seeing him in the winner's circle. And, geez, I, I feel like I just saw him at Belmont a few hours ago and made that trip, and he certainly made it worthwhile. And with each passing week, it seems like his, his money, as far as being the top leading rider in this country, continues to grow. I mean, he is over three or just under $3 million ahead of John Velasquez, 11.2 down to $8 million in Javier Castellano. You would say outside of Victor Espinosa winning the Triple Crown with American Farrell, Javier would be almost a lock at this point for a third consecutive eclipse. No, I agree. I think that Victor's, in some ways, the, you know, the, the trainer and the, and the horse of the year and the rider are probably wrapped up because Triple Crown is such a big moment, but year, year in, year out, Javier's amazing. Well, I, I agree with all that, and it probably is a foregone conclusion. But when we watch this race, I'm going to expound on it and make my case for Javier. I, I'm not, I don't think any of us are making a case against no, him. No, no, I, I understand. It's just one of those things in racing. I mean, I almost feel sorry for guys like a Pletcher or a, Ta a Chad Brown. Different people are trying to win the Eclipse again, and it's sort of over because Baffert's going to win it. Wrapped up on the first Saturday in June. It is what it is, but there's a lot of money and a ton of races out there. And we'll get back to uh, Javier Castellano riding for Todd Pletcher in the Cornhusker Stakes and Mid. I will send it to you as they uh, run down the backside into the turn. This is such a key move right here. When this horse falls away, he's laying second, Golden Lad, and he comes out, and Horatio Caramanos outside of him is trying to put him in that jackpot, and if he wasn't decisive there and got his position and held his ground, he would have been stuffed in behind the eventual winner. And if, he wasn't, if, if, if he wasn't riding one of those Todd Pletcher horses that just kept on coming and kept on coming, he might not have won anyway because the local horse at Cleto Red, and I agree with what you're saying and was watching it live thinking the same thing, if he doesn't, I mean, he looks like he's home, the local horse, and Golden Lad just grinds him down relentlessly. He really is, and that horse got to set a very moderate pace on the lead. But to me, watching the race, I'm going, well, Javier's going to have to get out of this trick bag. And when Caramanos made that move, he was decisive. If he had been any hesitation whatsoever, he would have got stuffed, and the horse on the lead would have went on and won because he would have gotten it that much easier. No, I think it's a really great point. And so I'll tell you something, they're great handling of this horse by Todd Fletcher. He found that race, I think about a $200,000 race at Penn National a few weeks ago, wins that race. Now he runs in a $300,000 race to Fort Husker. Todd knows he's not winning the Whitney or the Woodward with this horse, but he's giving up some very big purses with him. Well, not only is Todd a great horseman, he's a great manager. He knows where he can put his horses and grind out this kind of money. Right. Is he, and you'll remember this because you're old like I am, 
Is he the Smart older Ten. horse version of Smart? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, as, I, we all think of Smart Ten, but Woody Stevens is one of the first horses to travel around the country picking up those purses. And you and I being old timers, we look back on that. It's also not bad being Todd Fletcher, knowing that wherever in the country you run, whatever time of day or night, you could get Javier Castellano to come ride your horses. Jumps on a plane, three hour flight, gets there, hustles in the room. Knocks out two stakes. I agree with you. Probably would have been three if he made it there on time. Now he loses the hour coming back on that three-hour flight, so he probably get home about 4 o'clock in the morning, and he'll be here doing it again this afternoon. Handful of calls Sunday afternoon at Belmont Park. He will try to catch Irad Ortiz over the next 16 cards at beautiful Belmont. 15 when you're watching the show. We'll talk about Victor Espinosa. We'll head out to the West Coast when we come back. Back to Belmont Park. Dark Monday and Tuesday when you're tuning in to MSG Plus for the National Racing Report. We gear up this coming Wednesday at 1.20 p.m. with the nine race card. And that will set us up, A, for the draw of Saturday's Independence Day Stars and Stripes card. And that's going to be a terrific day of racing. Many big names are running. Nah, it's going to be a great day of racing. I mean, you think that Tonalist is sort of a, 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 sort of an afterthought running in the Suburban. A horse who, outside of, of course, American Pharaoh, might could be a horse of the year type horse. But those those two big turf races are going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to turf, but every time we talk about the Suburban, I get more excited about it. To me, this Suburban is one of the better fields we've seen in the Suburban in a few years. Yeah, it's almost been an afterthought, it seems. Flat Out comes to mind as a horse who relished the Suburban, loved going 10 on this main track, but you've got Tonalist running against Coach Inge and uh, My Loot from the Pletcher Barn, VE Day and FNX for uh, Jimmy Jerkins. Looking forward to all the races that weekend, and old-timers like Richie and I, we remember a lot of great Suburbans. <laughs> a lot of history in that race. It's been run over a century. It has got a long, extensive list of winners, as did the old Hollywood Gold Cup, which is no longer in existence. It's the Gold Cup at Santa Anita now. We'll pick it up into the far turn. No shared belief, no California chrome. We do, however, have a pretty exciting finish down to the wire. Listen, these horses were putting on a good show, and that's a nice thing to see in the race. But as you say, the star power out west has been lost, unfortunately, with shared belief and because of the campaign of California chrome. Opportunity is a hard luck loser in this race, Richie. Well, he is, and he, I mean, he goes extremely wide, turn it for home, while the, the winner just gets an absolutely dream trip. Not a straw in his path, saved every inch of ground. Talk about being in a groove, Victor Espinosa. Oh, well, th I was thinking this last Living night. Living the dream, baby. This. Yeah. <laughs> this was a better ride wow. than he gave American Frau in any one of the three triple crown races. He's right down the rail with, with, with hard aces, and it's just a situation where I think he realized, I'm going to have to get a little lucky to win this race, and he saved every bit of ground, and not only him saving every bit of ground, but opportunity kind of blowing the turn a little bit. Yeah, when you talk about a nose, I mean, obviously, you know, if, if you switch trips, <laughs> opportunity wins by three. Um, but hard aces, you could see Victor's thought process going into the second turn. He's kind of watching things, and I agree with you. I think he said to himself, well, I can't come around and win. I'm going to drop to the fence, take my chances, and boy, everything just opened up. And even with all that, he basically wins a bob. I mean, he almost yeah. lost the race anyway. Everything's coming up roses for him. Catch a flight was a little disappointing in this race. I I wonder if a mile and a quarter proved a little far for him. Yeah, I thought he had a good enough trip. Yeah. I thought he got there in a position to win. One thing I did want to mention, though, we talk about you know how so many of our races in New York come up paceless, where they're just slower paces. That's not the problem in California. If anything, it's the opposite. Guys are not afraid, no matter what the distance led horses rock Well, Moreno was even like fifth down the backstretch. Really, I mean, in regards well, to Well, Cornelio him, went out to ride Nowhere him. near the lead. So there you go. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, Cornelio. but they did go a half and 45 and change going a mile and a quarter. But, and, and I think that's more to the point. Guys are not afraid to allow horses to use their speed. Well, we saw Drayden Van Dyke come here and run a field, and he fell in the lead with a horse who was maybe the third fastest horse early, right. and he was able to win a race earlier in the card because he was on a slow pace. He must have thought he died and went to heaven when he came to New York. And speaking of pace, we'll get some quality speed as we stay out at Santa Anita, and we'll get on to Saturday's Triple Ben Stakes. Masochistic, holy smokes, is this a good sprinter. Masochistic might be the best sprinter in the country. Obviously, we saw a very good performance from Rockfall in our true north. This was the single most impressive performance of the day by a lot. Down the back stretch. Tyler Bays is water skiing, just trying to keep him, you know, to not go too fast. He goes eight flat, 120 and a fifth, draws away. 
a sensational performance. They went 22 point 31 the second quarter now they got the slow first quarter 22 85 and it's probably a bit of a run-up situation but regardless this horse was running fast the entire way yeah this is a serious horse it's hard to believe he ever lost his first start how could you imagine any maiden anywhere beating this horse and i love his pedigree by that uh, prolific sire sought after. Who is he? He'll be sought after. No you know idea. everything. <laughs> My kind of horse, though, just one of these, you know, uh, run-of-the-mill cowbreds on the uh, surface looking at his pedigree, but he can run. He's like that good Warren's Venita who's by a $500 uh, uh, sire out there at Affirmation, but this horse is very solid, and I would have to think, what's the uh, grade one out at Del Mar? Crosby, 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 right. A couple yeah, races for him. Yeah. And he won, well, he won on synth, but now, of course, they're going to be dirt, and Samantha Siegel is part owner of this JMS stable, and she had a big day here yesterday with a horse who looks like he's going to be a big force in the Amsterdam. So things going well for her. Victory is sweet. 89 buyer for Victory is sweet who took down a decent field Fast of all the horses though. and had to do it when he was under the gun and chasing down inside for a good portion of the far turn. Ron. Yeah, he showed a different dimension. I like he showed that kind of grip, but we'd be remiss not to mention Ron Ellis who took over the training of this horse. He is a tremendous horseman. I had the pleasure of riding for him and this horse is just absolutely, to me, the best sprinter. No, I mean, he is. He's tough, boy. We get back to another furious finish. Much the best sprinter in the triple bend. Things were a lot closer on the turf with the Phillies and Mares and Saturday's Royal Heroin Stakes. And it was Fanti Colo who was up on the engine throughout with that tactical speed three wide or so. She's just about to forge ahead, and she just did not want to lose this race. She, she's a nice horse who was able to be on a very moderate pace, and the entire cavalry charge was coming at her in the stretch, but she was able to hold them off. Well, I think she was the one who got the best trip, stalking a soft pace, got the first run over the eventual runner up queen of the sand and rafael barano is you know obviously a good rider wins a lot of races out there it gets to me sometimes a pet peeve of mine he won't get a stick over his left hand and i think he it might have made the difference in this in this spot you would know better than me I, I will defer to you on that he couldn't quite get up and once again it just shows the value of having speed and being involved early because as you said she may not have been best but because of her tactical trip she got it done yeah and and, and i will say i mean he did eventually get the stick over his left hand but it just earlier in the stretch it seemed to me like so you don't have to correct a horse when they're running forward so the last 16th it wasn't his left hand but i wish he would have done it about an eighth of a mile sooner We'll stay on the turf, Phillies and Mares. That'll wrap up the action on this show from Santa Anita. Let's get out to Monmouth Park. In fact, down to Monmouth Park, Saturday's Eaton Town Stakes. Close finishes seem to be pretty popular on tonight's show. Kenzar Dajon, orange cap down inside. She will not be able to wear down the leader to her outside. I'm already sexy. Yeah, I thought that Abel Escano, uh, Javier's brother, gave a very good ride here on Kenzar Dajon. She had plenty of room to get through. I mean, Paco put her in a little tight, but legally tight down there. But I just thought the best horse won, I'm already sexy. Yeah, I, I agree with you. She reasserted herself when she got the challenge from the inside. And the, and the Philly, Kenza. How did we say that? Kenza Darjan. Okay. Kenza Darjan. I'll work on your I'm, French I'm, I'm, I'm I've been work working on, on his for seven years. <laughs> yes. He's doing very well. Yeah, well, it, it'll student. take me at least another seven years. <laughs> Just Kenza rolls Darjan, off my tongue. She didn't hesitate going through the first oh. spot, so I don't think she was uncomfortable down in there. I just think I'm already sexy. was a little bit better. No, I, I completely agree with you. And Stellar Path was third best in here. It was a nice race, nice riding all around. Best horse won. The La Rose, maybe? That's uh, Whitney Day. Is that? On August 8th. It's a mile. You've got the, uh, the Weya going 12, I think, on that same card on the turf. That race is at a mile, the Dela Rose. Wondering if maybe some of these horses might rematch there. I could be wrong about this, but is the Dela Rose a race that's restricted to horses that haven't won a sweepstake that year? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, That's that, a good that, question. That I, I just looked at the stakes calendar. If thinking, not, they could be there, but they, you know, we'll see. I don't know yeah. where all the stakes are right now. All but right. Well, we know we're going to Saratoga in less than a month, and we know we're going to wrap up the action at what turned out to be a historic spring summer meet at Churchill Downs with American Pharaoh's first part of a three-part masterpiece back on the first Saturday in May. Four stakes beneath the Twin Spires when we come back. Back to Belmont Park, a sloppy and wet Sunday. We were off the turf. La Verdad figured to go off a heavy favorite and likely winner in the featured dance in Renee. And as we get closer to the spa and begin our three-week charge to Saratoga this coming Wednesday, we invite you to check out the new Naira.com, new wagering interface. And we've got this brand new... Um, Brand new uh, deposit uh, bonus going on, $125. New member, sign up, easy to use. It's a good time all around. Nah, it's a great deal. You fund your account, you can bet any number up to $125, and we will match that as a bonus. So get that done. Get on to Naira Rewards. Get on to Naira.com. It's a great betting site. Even I could use it.
well, bigger bonuses we were going to say, right? I can't even negotiate Naira.com. That's how good it is because I am probably the least computer literate person of anybody here. But that's a great endorsement. You can use Naira.com, the new wagering interface, a very small learner's curve with that. Four stakes. That's it. Churchill Downs. Curtain came down Saturday night beneath the Twin Spires. Travis Stone wrapped up his first spring and summer, early summer, calling uh, at historic Churchill Downs. Turf horses up first and the firecracker. You'd like all your grass runners to pull the kind of trip to party pulled here, skimming the hedge. Oh, this was a sensational ride. Miguel Mena reminded me of a couple years ago when Wise Dan and a driving rainstorm came up the rail. They even have similar yellow silks actually <coughs> coming through. But uh, great job by Al Stahl reinventing the party. Well, it feels like Groundhog Day all over again for a few reasons. And this horse really got a great trip. Um, and, and a lot of it was because Miguel Mena went forward leaving the gate, found his position, was able to find that break, drop to the fence, and then just everything worked out beautifully for him. No, no doubt about it. Everything right. A little bit unlucky for Night Station, who had a little bit of a trip in finishing second. Arguably could have been best. You thought Sky Ring ran pretty well. I think you're right, Richie. I, I, I thought he ran really well. He was chasing, caught wide every step of the way, had every right to cave in, and he actually didn't flatten out till very late. I, I thought Sky Ring was sneaky good. And an extension in a way, we talked about Todd Pletcher maximizing Golden Lad, shipping him all over the country. About the job Al Stahl has done with departing. Ran in sort of the second-tier derbies as a three-year-old a few years ago. He has now banked about $1.7 million with this horse. No, it, it, it's a tremendous job and a great point by you, you Jay, without doing that job. To have made almost $2 million with this horse, not to knock him, but that's quite an achievement. Well, that's what your top, your best trainers do. They're not only good horsemen and take care of their horses, they know how to manage them and maximize their abilities. And you see so many people put their horses in positions to fail. Your best trainers put their set their horses up for success. No, I agree. And that's one of the reasons. I mean, people say a lot of reasons. They make up reasons why trainers win. The best thing you can do is run your horses where they can win. And we actually had a Hall of Fame trainer filling in and saddling the eventual winner of the uh, Kelly's Landing in the form of Carl Nasker, who sent out for Ian Wilkes, Viva Mallorca. We remember him from Saratoga last summer. Maybe he's found his game going shorter. You know, we were talking about Travis wrapping up his first year at Churchill and, and what a great year it was for him. And we were lucky to have him this winter at Aqueduct. He picked up Via Mallorca, who's making that move on the outside pretty early. It's so funny you should say that because when I was watching the race last night, I thought that he picked that horse up long before I picked him up moving into contention. And that's what your best race callers do. They anticipate and they pick horses up early. Um, Carl Nasker, like you said, Jay, he, he saddled the horse for his former protege, uh, Ian Wilkes. And he said it took Ian a little while to figure this horse out. More of a one-run sprinter, but he comes with that good run. No, he's a horse that a lot of people thought had a very tough trip at the Curlin last year, a race won by V.E. Day before he won the Travers. The second finisher, Sheravelli, he started, he's, yeah, he's done okay. He's a horse who had some issues after <clears throat> looking like a real three-year-old prospect in 2014. Eddie Keneally trains him. He had a pretty good day winning that race, the big win down the Ohio uh, Iowa Derby, excuse me, and finishes second here. A nice performance. Yeah, maybe Chivarelli will come back to the Big Apple. Eddie does keep a string here year-round and obviously has horses going forward to Saratoga Springs. But uh, Viva Mallorca, the day belonged to him and Mary Lou Whitney's famed silks as we get closer to Saratoga and, of course, that Whitney Invitational on Saturday, August 8th. No, it all starts to come together, you know, and it's always nice to see. It's nice that they still, you know, Mary Lou still got the stable going strong and still doing well here. And Ian Wilkes, a trainer who does a sensational job. Yeah, Corey Lannery wound up second on the uh, runner-up here, and he wound up being lead and rider by one win in the last race. I'm sure he was probably a little bit uh, worried after getting caught in this one that he and Le J Julian Lee Peru were going to either tie, but he pulled it out in the final race. No, it's pretty cool. Race. Sounds like Javier and Irad on this circuit. It seems like they are always coming down to the wire together. And it'll be interesting to see Corey. I assume he's going to come to Saratoga again, and I think he started off slowly last year, but he started to pick things up, and I think he's come a long way as a rider this year. I'll bet if he comes to Saratoga, he has a much better meet. It's tough, but he'll, he'll do better. I think the second time around, too, just more of a comfort zone. You're a little more familiar with the riders, the horsemen, and the layout of Saratoga. And speaking of the spa, good segue into the back-to-back two-year-old stakes we have here at Churchill Downs. I remember D. Wayne coming out of the, both the Bashford Manor and Deputant with live two-year-olds upstate. Not sure that will be the case with this year's edition of the Bashford Manor, but we have a very fast Texas bred in 
He's coming in hot. I'm fairly sure this actually is the Bashford Manor that we're watching here, and Brett Calhoun, who trains the winner, he's come to New York. He hasn't had a lot of success. We'll see if he comes again. This horse, he's coming in hot, has had a little bit of bottom to him a few races. He ran well. He was far more impressive than the Philly winner we'll see in a few moments. Yeah, and the fact that he had to leave from the rail and he left so professionally, I mean, he, you know, Brett Calhoun does such a good job schooling his horses, much in the fashion of, of, of Todd Pletcher, of Steve Asmussen. Their horses are very, very prepared. I feel like he came to Saratoga a couple summers ago and got very unlucky was in the Adirondack. Was Golden Song? It was a Texas Some horse Brett like Philly that got a very a miserable brutal trip. trip down on the inside yeah. in there and probably should have won and got bounced around on the rail, and he was yeah. very unlucky. Should have won that day. He actually said in his post-race comments that he's either going to come to Saratoga with the horse or there's a race in Prairie Meadows. I mean, I think we all agree he'd probably have to step his game up to be competitive in Saratoga, but at least you know he's going to do things properly. He breaks well and he puts himself in yeah, the And the experience there. will help a lot because a lot of the horses in those races are coming out of one race maiden wins, and this horse has three or four races already. Right, already battle-tested out in the Midwest. Let's wrap things up. Race 12 of 12 on the Racing Report. It's the Deputant Stakes. These are two-year-old fillies, and I'll send it to over to uh, you guys as they come off the bend in the stretch. I'll tell you, things have changed a lot in the last few moments with this race, and this is one where uh, some long shots were leading early, but uh, the favorite was down the inside for Steve Asmussen. Just, I don't know, I don't think she was uncomfortable down the inside. I just think she was second best, Rishi. Yeah, I think she was second best as well, and you know, it's interesting. I think we both, or all of us, agree that it was a, a kind of a slow race. Cosmic Evolution sat outside, got it done. Calvin Burrell is basically taking a hiatus. O almost seems like he's starting to think about stepping away and retiring. But he said after the race, I'll go anywhere to ride this filly. That sounds like jockey speak to me. Uh, you would know better than me, but that sounds like jockey speak to me. He may, he may have to go anywhere to ride her because I can't imagine she'll be going to any major circuits off a win like this because she'll get drowned. Yeah, maybe there's a two-year-old stake worth 60 or 70 Gs at Ellis Park or something like that. She does not seem like, with all due respect and with peace and love, a Schuylerville uh, kind of horse or out around deck quality, but Lonnie Wiggins has got a uh, twenty thousand dollar yearling by Proud Citizen that just took down the winner's share of a hundred thousand. Over a second slower, the boys went in the Bastard Manor. All right, Stars and Stripes wrap up on this show a week from now. Of course, we'll have the action from all over the country, including the UN. You guys will be doing the Fox Sports One show of the uh, at Mammoth Park, the United Nations, and that'll do it. The buzzer has sounded. The MIG, Andy, Jason, thanking you for joining us, and we'll see you next time right here on MSG+.